her future ch- potential children. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, so started Twitch streaming. Easy plug. Twitch.tv slash Silent Mike. Oh. And uh, I'm watching different videos and choosing a topic every day. Uh-huh. And so uh, the other day I did no fap. And, uh-huh. and I watched like three, four different guys talk about NoFap. One, like, just a kid vlogging his NoFap experience. Another guy who's like, I don't know why it's such a thing, but like the the alf- alpha male dating guy. Like, that's a huge content creator thing. Like, how, like, game. I think when we were in high school, like, game started to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, there's like terms on like how to hit on women, but it's such trash. Like, you're going to end up with a trash relationship if you follow these things. Like, it's oh, like right. a how to get laid rather than... Remember, we, we even like had a dieting, dieting like a expert. system. We had a dieting expert on this uh, show. D- dating expert. Yeah, and, and he was actually pretty good. He's actually He is actually pretty good. But, s- but some of the other ones are so douchey, you know? They're no, like, is that a thing? People no, are doing this? Oh, huge thing. Oh. Yeah, it's like this alpha male weirdness. And so th- another video I watched on NoFap is this alpha male weird guy. And then uh, another one was like... Some pseudoscientist talking about fucking whatever. And then so then I, I, I dove down to nose breathing and Wim Hof yesterday. Danny's all in on that right now. Uh, a lot of people. I could see Danny being all in. Yeah, he's all in on them. And Wim so, Hoff. no offense, Danny. Love you, buddy. But I started watching these doctors and some pseudoscientist on Rogan and some pseudoscientist on another podcast. And this is podcast format I'm watching where these guys have unlimited amount of time to teach me. And this guy just keeps saying so, so, so many benefits from breathing through your nose. <laughs> so many. That, that's the There's y- so much evidence so and so much. many benefits because so, of the so, so much. So because of this evidence and so many studies that breathing through your nose is beneficial. So many benefits. And I'm like, okay. Give me a benefit, bro. Yeah, we're so serious. There's so many studies. Where's the science? There's so Fill many studies. Me hit in. me with a foot. Hit me with a foot footnote. Like what science? There's so many studies that really show these things. I'm like, oh, nothing ever came. <laughs> nothing ever fucking came. And Where's, I'm like, that's on Rogan too, uh, dude. And hey, Rogan's like, like being a little skeptical of it, and that's why he's like obviously is where he is. Like he kind of pushes back when st- it is awkward in person. People don't get that. Like we've done some controversial ish guests or whatever and they're like you know it's easy to say like why don't you ask the tough questions like bitch it's hard you're staring this guy in the eye and i'm gonna say hey dean you know like it's hard rogan does decent at that but just going off forever spinning circles about evidence science and shit i'm like dude tell me why i gotta breathe through my nose if it's so bad to breathe through my mouth like god or evolution or monkeys wouldn't allow me to breathe through my mouth that's yeah that's a fair point yeah and I, I'm sure there's something to it. And I fuck around with it when I'm riding my bike. I've been like thinking about it. I'm like, oh, maybe it'll help. And there's some. I think there's some like mental stuff. Well, there's this thing where the one thing for sure that happens is it opens up your over like over time. The more you do it, it opens up your natural like it, it opens up your uh, what's it called your nasal passages. So he did say larger. that. He um, said that, and I so believe it makes that. It easier to breathe through your nose. Right. But you, you don't you don't use it you lose it that makes sense yeah. when you breathe through your mouth more it's probably a little bit harder to breathe through your nose okay mm-hmm. and then uh, I do think there's something between like stomach breathing and diaphragm breathing there's probably something in there and whether it's like physiological because some people think that shit burns fat I don't know about all that or like metabolically beneficial mm-hmm. but there might be some uh, mental health anxiety stress to it if you're always breathing in your chest and you kind of end up you know, all shrugged up all the time, you're probably going to feel tense and, and, and that can correlate to your emotions. So if you're breathing more in your belly and you're kind of confident and relaxed, okay, maybe there's something there. Two, two things I know. One of them is that uh, th- this act of sighing like literally lowers your heart rate and your blood pressure. Out your mouth? Out your mouth, out your ass. However you, however you do it. I've never sighed out my ass. <laughs> however you <laughs> sigh. Well, you haven't lived. <laughs> <laughs> However you sigh, it, that's how it works. That's why people sigh. To when you're stressed <laughs> and you sigh. Oh that, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that, and that brings it brings down your heart rate, brings down your makes your, sense. Okay, and, and another thing actually has to do with lifting and bracing, um, especially back in the geared era. But I think it's probably true of everybody. Like, don't hold your air in from here up. Hold sure, it from here down. Yeah. So, like, don't hold it in your head in your upper chest. You're gonna try right. to hold it in your in your thoracic cavity. Yeah. Um, and it with that will help you brace. Sure. And and the people who really blew their faces out back in the day, right, were in their head. Yeah, there's something uh, I learned early playing the trumpet. 
and you kind of breathe similarly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where you're breathing all through your face, and you just can't last. It's like the you're, one you're, musical thing we have in common. Yeah, you're about to play a 10 minute song, and you're gonna fucking blow your face out, you know, or or or, or, or cheeks out. Even though uh, what's the name Louis Armstrong does that's not like proper form. Um, Dizzy Gillespie, I think, was the worst. With this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing the the pseudoscientists did say. Was that it, it, it like oxygenates you more? I don't know how that works. But he said it, it's like harder to breathe through your nose even when you're adapted. So you breathe a little bit slower. And so you take like bigger breaths that are like more calming. Again, to like the anxiety, stress type stuff. That makes some sense to me. And then he said it has like filters. And I was it like, It forces well, you to be more rhythmatic. With your right. Breathing. Right. Which makes sense. That makes some benefits to me. Like not so, so many benefits to like change yeah, the but, world about breathing. Just say that one thing. Just say like, yeah, it makes you think about your breathing or breathing slower like meditation. Like, how, okay. How is that different from yoga or tight? chi or anything else that causes you to change your breathing no it's the exact same except 24 7 is the point like if you're breathing through your nose 24 7 i'm skeptical that's possible unless you unless you're in such good condition that your heart rate and respirations are just lower i think it's a conscious decision to do it like it's a conscious effort at first but i think it's possible and then and and then like the the filter thing makes sense too i mean you got like nose hair for a reason where we don't have like mouth hair you're a half cat man. Yeah, I was going to say a walrus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a walrus probably has some like cat fucking... Man. I feel like a walrus has mustache in its teeth. Kinda. <laughs> yeah, a cat licks your hand. Uh, they like zoomed in on one of those things. I don't know if it's real or not, but like Twitter, they did like a microscopic fucking cat tongue thing. And it looks like a billion octopus tentacles. Ooh, so it's not like sharp edges. It's uh, more like yeah, rounded. I don't know how small we're talking. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like it, no, it kind of looked like a tent, like the tip of a tentacle. Okay. Like kind of like mini daggers. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sounds kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I hate cats. Galpin posted a picture, a but I don't know right, if that was yeah. a human one or a cat one. Oh uh, no, I don't think it was him. Have you guys ever eaten cow tongue like in a like, Mexican? Food yeah, before? yeah. Nah, but I remember seeing it in the stores as a kid. And yeah, it's very harnessed Oh, I think yeah, I've had it at a I, Japanese I, spot. Maybe. It is. I don't. I don't know. I tried it one time on a burrito, and I was like, eh. "It's tender, but it isn't very exciting." No, it's not. It's, it's going to have much flavor. It's the only food that can taste you back. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of. Uh, I feel like there's a <laughs> lot of <laughs> cultures and countries that eat some normal ass shit. Yeah, and that's why it's normal ass shit. Like a lot of spots eat chicken breast. Mm-hmm. A lot of spots do something with a ribeye or a brisket, mm-hmm. right? Like Japan, us, South America, all this stuff. All that. Outside the circle shit ain't good. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. everyone would be doing it. Well, they're eating it because there's like a lack of a better option. Maybe. or they're, they're, And I do appreciate them trying to use all of the animal. Like, I appreciate that thought. Yeah. But, like, I've had, like, intestine at, like, a, a Korean barbecue, mm-hmm. and that was... It's not good. It's like a bubblegum worm. With juice, and in it's it. like menudo. the grossest. I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not a menudo person. I'd rather mm-hmm. I'd rather that that a couple of, a th- of fat, couple right? three four five adolescent native Spanish speakers sing to me than to eat <laughs> cow intestine. Yeah, it's I just, just mm-hmm. it just doesn't sound good to me. No, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. first thing that pops up in the movie. How fucking old I am. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I'm a, I'm a freshman when this it's is going a, down. It's an ager. It ages you. I don't know. I've never... I really don't... It, the good thing and why I joke about it is because it doesn't affect me. Like, I, I feel old, but I don't give a fuck. I did a, I did a talk uh, at my high school last week, and I'm looking around, and there's probably like sixth grade through seniors in high school, basketball camp, probably like 70, 80 kids. And I'm fucking sounding old, saying like, back in my day. And then I say like, I was sitting right there, like... And I did the math real quick in my head. I said, 19 years ago, when none of y'all were alive. And they were all like, oh, this fucker is old. 19, and then I hop in my car, and then the sun hits right, and I have like four gray hairs on the left side of my <laughs> head. You know? I call, it was those, like a I movie. call them blonde hairs. <laughs> <laughs> going blonde going blonde for the summer. I got some blonde in my beard. Just going wild. <laughs> But the, this movie hit me. We were talking about it off air. Like, the footage looks a little grainy sometimes, but I think it's security and whatever. They talk about how many VHS tapes of the incident they have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, when yeah. the fuck did DVDs come out? I was, a, I, was, I was a freshman in high school. I feel like DVDs probably had the shortest run of, like, usage. I feel like VCRs were used for a long time, right? Or, or cassette. No? Cassette had to be a short, little-lived world. Mm-hmm. I know it's music, but... Cassettes went on for quite a while. I don't know. They came out in the eighties, s- no seventies. Oh, then maybe they had a little. Yeah. Well, they all have like ten year runs. Is that kind of yeah. how it goes? A little bit. Almost, yeah. Almost maybe fifteen. It, yes. I, no. I do feel like CDs and DVDs are fucked. I remember back in high school, like before there were 
VC, VHS VCRs out there. And there and and then um, like well, actually, I don't know whether they existed or not. I know that we watched the movies in a history class that I had that were on literally reel to reel videotapes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And like I, I, I would, the, the thing. <laughs> And then I've only I'd seen it in cartoons. And then the next, like the sort of at the end, there were the Betamax, like the high Betamax ones that were literally for like broadcast and stuff that schools mm-hmm. could buy. Mm-hmm. And then, um, not very long after Patches that, Patches O'Houlihan, <laughs> yeah, VHS. <laughs> so I think part of the issue too is my family was not very technical. Although my mom's pretty good. Like my mom's moms can fix a computer, like basic shit. But we were always behind. Like, I think we got our first computer in the late 90s. But I remember getting, like, a CD player, like a family gift on mm-hmm. Christmas at, like, 96. Was 19. it a skip or was it skip proof? Uh, shock proof? It was, like, a big old one. Not a big uh, old one, but, like, a boom boxy oh, like CD gotcha, deal. Gotcha. Oh, you're I'm portable. Okay, you're way behind. Then. That's what I I'm mean, saying. Yeah. Well, because, well, like, well, I mean, my dad just worked 24-7, and mom's a teacher. Like, what, what do they give a fuck? You know, it's not like we're some text. So we got it in, like, 95, 96, because I remember getting the Lion King soundtrack with it, and that probably came out in 94, 95, right? So then we got Toy that. Story, Toy Story 1 came out in 95. So I think, or Is Lion King older than that? I think it's older than that. Maybe 93. Either way, so we're we're, we're but I know uh, that's how I know the year because we're in that ballpark, and then four years later, I'm in eighth grade and I have the the USB fucking iPhone shuffle that holds twenty songs. You mm-hmm. just put one album on that, hang it on my neck, and go mm-hmm. play basketball. Mm-hmm. That is the best. 94. That's the best music fucking thing on the planet. The original shuffle, the little white stick. Yeah, the wh- original. Sh- it oh. honestly looks like a looks like a. Smaller version of like the Amazon it is, controller. Yeah. yeah, that's literally even to this day I would use that if that was out. Yeah, it's still practical. It's way if on my bike rides I have to wear a fanny pack because I got to bring my phone to listen to music. My phone's fucking huge. Well, mm. then they made like the even smaller ones, right? Remember the, that clip uh, on your on shirt? On your shoulder, genius. Yeah. I never had that, but yeah, I, knew, I didn't either. And I, I didn't have the shuffle either. The shuffle just looks cool too. It looks like yeah. some Men in Black shit, and you it can, had a necklace. You can do Apple Apple Watch. True. But that's bag. like what, three hundred buck? Yeah, I gotta charge that bitch. That little shuffle you put thirty songs on it, hanging on my neck, I'm fucking rocking. You can probably still probably still adapt, you still transfer songs to it. Like oh, how maybe. do you transfer? Oh, no, can you can't. Because no, it's all there's all i i music. You can't own any of those songs anymore. You bear you gotta spend a shit ton of money to own songs, and then you also like half the computers in the world don't even have like USB plugins, and half do. <laughs> like it's all fucked. You know what's crazy is like they basically took all ownership out of the consumer with like music. Yeah, yeah. we don't own shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But in terms of like uh, computers and cars and all that kind of stuff, there's a definite move to proving your ownership. Like you can actually, there's a lot of a lot of things that you're technically not supposed to to uh, repair yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like have, in a car? You know, well, and um, well, like all Apple things. You know, like if you're if you want to keep your warranty, you don't mm-hmm. have the right of. But you can't uh, change your own battery. Yeah, oh, yeah. or they'll you, just kill your warranty. Is that yeah. liability? Or you've seen the meme? They're like a car, car, car manual from 1960 teaches you how to change your axle. <laughs> car manual from 2021 <laughs> teaches you how to turn on your blinker or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, like a little yeah. bit like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it's all internally <laughs> integrated business, right? They just want. Yeah. They own. They want to own all ends of the well, of this of the thing. And even if it's not liability, like they're way better off not teaching you shit. You're gonna go pay a thousand dollars for them to exactly. change your oil. So, uh, we are talking about Untold: Malice of the Palace. Is Untold like a series for for Netflix or something? It or felt it like it. Maybe it is based maybe. on the intro. Yeah, the intro seemed like like it was covering generic. a lot of different things. Very generic. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should look into other ones. I I highly enjoyed this. I think it was kind of shot. I, this is a Netflix original, right? Yes. Yeah. And what was Last Dance? Its own shit. Last Dance. That was Netflix. Was, it was I know on it's there. I know it's on Netflix, yeah. but I don't know who made it. Either way, it had I a. Thought s- it came out there first. It had a similar Maybe vibe not. where Maybe they kind of had like modern day sit downs. They had a couple old day sit downs, and they had old footage. I don't know why. In terms of like formatting, this was probably my favorite sports doc style we've watched. Yeah, it was good. I I liked that it was like also timely, like yeah. as far as like it wasn't too long. I, it was yeah, an hour, dude. An hour, an hour, hour, hour nine yeah. minutes, dude. Solid. Yeah. That's why something last like this, like like the Usain Bolt could have been that long. 
you for Usain, sure. Usain Bolt, like obviously after we watch a bunch of these, and I liked it, and there's something, but it's just like the pace is so bad. No, nothing no. happens. Like all that extra footage that you had him, like I know you felt like obligated to use it because yeah. you had him carry around a camera for all yeah. these years, but like it was all junk. Yeah, and unless they, yeah, they just didn't expand on the story of him being like a goofy kid or him partying. They didn't expand no. on anything. We're like this. Everything in there has like a, a had a purpose. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. last dance is ESPN and Netflix. Oh, cool. Okay. So These are shot. Are, yeah. Uh, it is theirs. Yeah. So it's like beyond thirty for thirty. So that's why uh, um, Netflix it. is in. Those are so good. I was telling Jim we should do some of those too. They're all like old and maybe overwatched, but some yeah, of the thirty for thirties, like the Dennis Rodman, so good. Run Ricky Run about Ricky Williams is mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. They're really they're good stories and they're sh- I think shot really well. And, and obviously I'm biased because I love sports, but. So we're talking about uh, an incident that happened in November of 2004. Yeah. Indiana Pacers. Indiana Pacers. Detroit Pistons. Detroit Pistons. Ben Wallace. Big Ben. Yeah. Bad motherfucker. Rumor has it he wore headbands on his arms. (laughs) Swear to God. (laughs) The little ones. Dude. They were, Supposedly they those are headbands. They made a mention of that, like uh, how you had always wore so much shit on his arms, yeah. started throwing all kinds of shit. Yeah. But supposedly he had a he- headbands on his fucking arms, dude. Dude was jacked. Yeah. Dude was. They're all kind of jacked. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Jackson. There was that skinny, trend though, where those all those guys were wearing like the small, like the thin cut socks on the everything. On yeah, the, Iverson. In the uh, in the div- in the divot of the uh, arm. Yeah. Some of that. I'll put them right here. This era is just like what I know so well. So obviously, again, That's I'm biased. The best era like this of NBA. One loved, of the best. Yeah, I love. Like obviously, I l- Magic Johnson is my favorite player of all time. That's way older. But like this era is just so much. So many characters. It's kind of. I don't know if it's world culture, but this is the same era when WWE was fucking sick because everyone's fucking out of yeah. their mind. Like 1999 to like 2005, everyone's fucking crazy, and I love it. We got a lot of personality in the early 2000s yeah. of uh, basketball. Like yeah. you get a lot of the, you see these guys like kind of being themselves, and like everybody like has different. Everybody looks different on the court because everybody's dressing differently. Yeah, like it's almost like yeah. you know. They kind of mentioned they go into that detail too about like the dress code and stuff, but like yeah, you saw more people's like personality of like what kind of player they were, kind of based on how they were kind of were dressed. On hundred percent, hundred percent. And basketball invaded hip hop in a lot of ways. A lot of a lot of player and team crossover references. culture. Yeah, I mean that's why like I grew up fucking watching BET and listening to rap music. Yeah, I just loved basketball so much, and that's just they were so. And that's even in hindsight and as an adult, that's what I love about basketball. Not that other sports don't have a culture, but like. Basketball culture so in your face. Yeah, yeah like, it's the most prominent one. Like, I, yeah. I mean, the clothes, the music, the cars, like all of it is just so hip hop. Well, they always say like every rapper wants to be an NBA player, yeah. and every NBA player wants to be a rapper. Yeah, the uh, the dress code thing is interesting, and even the arm sleeve. I thought I th- I'm pretty damn sure this is still true. The arm sleeve became really popular because of Allen Iverson. Yeah, he was like kind of a pioneer on that. He had a tattoo uh, of the globe with a knife through it and said "fuck the world" on it, really mm. big, and so obviously. ABC and shit wouldn't yeah. the NBA wouldn't let him do that if he's on national coverage and so he started wearing that then it became a style. Um, I thought the dress code was because of him, um, and I'm sure he played a role in it because he just. I think it was like the straw that broke the, the camel's back. Yeah, yeah, he's sagging to his ankles like draws out and mm-hmm. stuff. Four like, XL, uh, you know, tall tee dude. Tanks. dude. I used and to go to t-shirts fo- under the jersey was like more popular than. Or the tee that's only half on. You got a tank on, and then you have only one <laughs> sleeve on. I did that. <laughs> every every October, <laughs> me and my dad would go to like Arden Mall, and we go to Foot Locker, and it was like three for twenty tees. Like my dad probably had all the tall tees there. My yeah. dad probably didn't really know what was going on, but like he saw it was a deal, three for twenty, and I wore jerseys and sh- shirts all the time. He's like, yeah, we just buy fucking like nine tees, and I just wore black <laughs> and white t-shirts with a snapback or a fitted hat all the time. Yeah, so, like, the dress code thing's interesting. Me and Jim were talking off air, too. Like, the biggest thing, if we can get a little more serious, is uh, the thug stuff. Oh, yeah. I was br- I was really wanting to touch on that, too. It's way different when you watch it as an adult and in 2021. Dude, it's in right in your face. Yeah. Where I told Jim, I remember back in the day, and I was aware of it, and I was aware there was a slight controversy, but not much. The controversy was kind of, like, like degrading the players a little bit. You know, I'm like 14, 15 when all this is going down or this era. And so, like, there was an energy there to it, but it wasn't racism. The racism is blatant when you look at the footage and the announcers now as an adult. And I think, I was telling Jim, I don't know because I was young, I think it was partial era and partial my age Mm -hmm. that racism. We just weren't, we weren't as in tuned 
with the you know like seeing that right, right in our face like also back then man like everything you watched was pretty white uh, on tv that so like we were 100%. just kind of used to that and then you got these same people talking about you know this stuff it doesn't and then and now that we've like grown up over the last you know 16 17 years of like as far as like uh a country i think yeah like in that short period of time of been more inclusive seeing more uh, opinions seeing you know seeing, seeing more people on tv now like we look back at that and be like oh my god this was like so one-sided yeah like, i think it's like not good i think yeah. back in that time not only social media but also just the general public is it was like almost pure entertainment so you saw these guys as athletes mm -hmm. you never saw them as humans we're like now everybody who knows lebron james knows about his three kids knows about his wife like that picture pops in your head just as much as him dunking mm -hmm. where they don't show they didn't show any of that in the 90s and early 2000s you don't know if jermaine o'neal's married no one knows no. like they didn't even pan to his wife in the audience that no, didn't just happen like uh, show show horses you know show ponies yeah that come out on the court that's it so they then, were kind of like minstrels yeah mm -hmm. so that so then if you call him a thug it's easy he's got cornrows he listens to rap music and you know nothing else about him so yeah. you're like yeah it's a thug he grew up in a not good neighborhood where now, like even in the documentary, Jermaine O'Neal just touches on it. They don't even go that deep about where he grew up. And they're panning through these shacks. Yeah. And they're pan, you know, like dude mm -hmm. went to the NBA at 17. He yeah. literally was doing everything he could to get out of like the worst situation ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where South Carolina. Makes it, yeah. Maybe. It makes it yeah. so human. Yeah. Where in the early 2000s, they didn't tell those stories. No, we didn't know anything about his, where he came from or like how, you know, and yeah. all the, 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 the triumphant, triumphant story. Um, yeah. Dude, yeah, it was bad. It was so bad. It was so, so racist. To, to break down I the know. actual incident, though, what happened was that uh, at this point in time, Indiana looks like it's gonna they're going to dominate the whole season. Yeah. Looks like they're going to you know make it all the way to the finals, win the championship, walk and, in and out. walk in and out. They went to the Eastern Conference Championship the year before, lost to Detroit. Sure, some bad motherfuckers. They don't go into how good that team was, too. Th these are good teams. Chauncey Billups... Are bad point guard like he's fucking but good at this point in the season which is like they kind of brushed over they were already seven and two against detroit i think they're seven and two, i think they're seven and two in all, overall maybe because then the season just started the season just started yeah it was just november yeah so. was it that early i think that's yeah. why they I didn't said catch it. that yeah so i think you they said, said something about being seven and two against them i, 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 I thought, don't know what he meant he might have meant over like the last couple of years but i thought it might have just been the season and i i was confused on why he even mentioned it maybe just to show that it's early and i think he maybe tried to show that it's early and the game didn't matter i think that's why he brought it up like is he saying it's like their entire record for the season was seven and i two? think so i thought he was talking about like their head-to-heads it might have been but, but I, I think you're right that makes more sense i think i more. think the point of putting it in the that's the other thing about like this documentary versus others like everything they put in like had a reason <laughs> yeah so i'm pretty sure he said we're seven and two basically um insinuating that this game had no weight like if we yeah. go seven and three who gives a fuck like we have yeah. a long way ahead yeah um that makes sense because of how hard the game went like they played it like it was the playoffs again yeah like the nba in particular i mean it's uh, baseball too but baseball is a little different because players are rotating like the nba's 82 games half of those they, you're not going that hard you know what no, i mean no, like you ain't no. going that fucking no hard point. yeah you're too tired everyone kind of knows there's like a little bit of a, a gentleman's game there like hey we're all gonna go about 80 yeah. percent, you know and so they went fucking hard in this game so the the three major characters uh, from the the pacers that we see uh, Jermaine O'Neal, yep. who is still pretty new to the league and is, is bad mama jamma. really, really good. So his era, and uh, I, I, I thought they didn't push the racism in the video or in the movie that hard. I think like it just hits you, but it's the subtext from the whole thing because the the word thug appears in the first minute and a half. But you know what I mean? They they could have pushed it harder. Is what I'm saying. So yeah. when he got drafted to the um, uh, Portland Trailblazers in that yeah. same era. The nickname for that team was the Jailblazers. Yeah. Oh, based off of, like, the people on the team? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, talk about racist. And I knew that name. I'm from Portland. I've always been, like, a yeah. low-key Trailblazers fan. And everyone called them the Jailblazers. Like, yeah. why is Jermaine a thug? I don't think he ever been to jail. Yeah. Like, what know. the fuck is that? That's why he's, yeah, yeah that's, he's been trying to change his patterns. And in these interviews, like, he's, like, the most, con like, he's the most level-headed cat in all of it. Yeah. Like, made his, I, I actually like run our test more after this because uh, i knew he had some mental health but you know what i mean like we were talking about humanizing and dehumanizing mm -hmm. people, folks like sometimes you're just like that motherfucker's crazy 
But then sometimes you're like, I understand. Mm-hmm. You know, like I liked him more here, but Jermaine seems fucking totally normal. Yeah, he looks. He seems totally <laughs> super <normal>. intelligent. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like very Mata's well a, spoken. Yeah, yeah. Men like, of World Peace is, is Ron uh, Dennis Rodman. Like they're out of their mind. Yeah, and Reggie Miller. Yeah, seventeen year vet. 18, 18 uh, 17 vet. maybe at the time, but yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, uh, he re- he retired yeah. at the end of that yeah. uh, that season. That was I mean, his eighteenth eight, season. Eighteenth. Yeah. Yeah. His real era is uh, the Jordan era. I yeah, mean, he, he battled Jordan and. The whole push was to try to get him and Steven Jackson a championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Steven Jackson. Um, That's kind of the underlying current of the whole uh, documentary. Yeah, was like getting Reggie his championship. Yeah, yeah. because he just got he just got whooped on by Jordan for ten years. <laughs> but Long, bad timing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you talk about our test, um, Meta World Peace. Yeah, he clearly could not regulate himself. I know. In you know, but how good does he? Time. How good does he describe it? He does a really good job of describing what he was going through yeah. at the time, but it sounds fucking crazy. No, he's crazy. Uh, but I, I, uh, I've talked about this in the past too. I'll be watching like some documentaries or something with my mom, or just humans, and people look at like, damn, that motherfucker's crazy. <laughs> and whatever happened that made them say that, in me, I'm like. Wow, I relate. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he describes it like energies, high, good, low, bad, he's like, no, it's all bad. I was like, I get that. Like, I understand. When I played basketball, I was so, I was so emotionally attached to what was going on. I was that guy. I, I, I fucking threw chairs and shit. Like, I was fucking crazy. I was a fucked up kid. I was crazy. I get it. I fucking get it. And the other thing, side note on Meta World Peace, how good does he look? Dude's like late 40s. Yeah, He, he looked the exact solid. same as when he, he was 23. He, did. he, look any different. he looks so good. Yeah, I also like that he was kind of like even back then and in like a time where like it wasn't uh, you were kind of almost looked down at for trying to take care of yourself like mentally. Yeah. How he had basically a shrink going with him every every game, every every city. Yeah. He had a, a on call basically a therapist with him. Who was a woman, outside. which was interesting. Yeah. 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 How different is that conversation? of mental health and even 2004 to now. And I know Simone Biles got a lot of heat from a bunch of randoms saying like, oh, quitter, 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 quit or whatever, tough guy, tough enough. You know, you're supposed to be an athlete. This is your job or whatever. Um, but he got no empathy. No, no one gave a fuck well, no, that he was struggling. Or, or Lamar even, Odom. Lamar Odom. Like, poor dude, old dude, old dude coke at a whorehouse. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, uh, you know, like, he, he's got, yeah, he needs pops. help. He needs yeah. help. Yeah. And he had no empathy. And that was only like seven years ago. No. Yeah. Was it even was it that long ago? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, no, no matter. It does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't. It's relevant. more recent-ish, and it yeah, still yeah, felt like sure. he got no empathy yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, a part of it is like I remember uh, there was a kid that I was in grammar school with who always seemed to need to act up at kind of the worst time. Yeah. You know, and he was the first person I ever knew who was on Ritalin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, all the way back then. So Ritalin's been around for a while, folks. Yeah, but way less popular. Yeah, like uh, no one, like yeah, now every kid's on yeah, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> nearly as common as yeah. it is now. But like, clearly, he had problems. He had emotional issues. He would he was violent, whatever. And when I saw the the this instance where he he decides he's laying down on the scorer's table, I'm like, he's acting up here, and that's I mean, that's weird. I think that's uh, not a normal thing for a person to do. And then this guy from the crowd throws a beer at him. I do think and that was the it one. Was that a glass bottle? In, I don't know. In, in the arena? Or it looked like an aluminum deal. Yeah, yeah, it looked like something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if that was even like a, if they were doing Maybe that. Maybe back in the day. Yeah. I do think that's the one thing Ron Artest kind of hindsight memory lied about. Like he about defi- his breathing exercises. Yeah, he's like, I'm like, maybe you were taking five, but you were definitely mocking them too. Oh that, yeah, that like you definitely did that to piss them off. Yeah, yeah, where where which I is I love. Like I love like that's uh, that's oh that's a that's the toxic way of killing them with kindness. You know what I mean? Like you are fucking want to punch my lights out, and he just fucking lounges. I do like that, but he's definitely not. Doing his breathing, he's not breathing through his nose right there. <laughs> he's not doing the Wim Hof. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know they all kind of target the uh, the guy in the stands that threw the threw the yeah, beer right. The wrong like guy the, as the number one like uh, uh, patient A right. Well, yeah. 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 But. Actually, I disagree. What you got? I think it was that fuck that told on uh, Ron to get his fu- get his foul. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. started yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. back, the came backup up. point guard. I don't even know his name. Yeah. I know that era so well. I don't even know that dude's that name. That dude came up. You can up, get your foul you can now. Get yeah. your gal- go get your foul now. No, for that's sure. That's what started it. And all. even yeah. Stephen Jackson, who's 
been out of his mind. Even when he was in the league later, he was kind of out of his mind, like with technicals and stuff. He even says, like, yeah, you don't got to tell him that. <laughs> 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 you ain't got to tell him. I would never. That is pretty dirty in He's a poking the tiger. Game. Like That's pretty dirty. That's pretty dirty. Yeah, but when you – here's the here's the thing, though. If you are a player and you clearly cannot control your behavior – then that's your fucking Achilles heel. Yeah. And they're going to pound you on that and pound you on that and pound you on that. And though the outcome was terrible there, it is fair game. Another thing I noticed with – because it started with a play before that, right? He – or maybe it was the playoff he game. He got fouled pretty hard in that game. I think game. he got fouled pretty hard, but even maybe they were showing the playoff game before. He got Richard Hamilton, the guy with the face mask, with the elbow to the face. Mm. That looked way softer than I remember. Mm. Like way faker. Mm-hmm. Like Richard act that up a little oh, bit. Oh, when he like fell down. Yeah, yeah like that he, was he, kinda, that he was a kinda, flop. He went to throw him one, but he didn't make that much contact. It was a flop. Yeah, we're uh, so used to seeing such terrible flops now. Now it's that really that bad. one looked like somewhat legit yeah. back then. Yeah, but now because they're so bad, you got LeBron just like flying across the court. It's close to soccer, dude. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, the uh, the beer guys, whatever. The point guard definitely started the entire thing. Uh. Another lie, I think they well, said. They brushed over that part of it yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. And yeah. Like, no, this guy in the stands' fault. I think they tried to live up the brotherhood of the NBA, but I think there's real rivalry. And even in the Heat, because they said, like, the fans didn't know. We're all homies. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, you're not acting that wild if that's, like, oh, your good, good friend. No, those was like, those like real punches. Like, shit. I've shoved yeah. a homie. Like, in practice, you get in fights, but I'm just. Like pushing you in the chest. I'm mm-hmm. never throwing a fist at my homie in practice. No. But how much. Uh, of the fight was actually between the Pacers and Pistons. The players, the players got they, which they do. The coaches and other players pulled them off really quick. Yeah, Ben Wallace was acting kind of crazy, but yeah, nothing that bad. Um, I think the worst guy was the and uh, his interview pissed me off too. Both his interviews, his one in the time and afterwards, teasing and ticket holder guys. The dude, the, uh, yeah, they're the ones that stormed the court, right? Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck! I would have fucking punched you too. Yeah, dude. I would have too. He, he tried to take zero responsibility. He said he got sucker punched. Yeah, I'm like, bro, you're running at him like with one of these. <laughs> like, I'm gonna knock you the fuck so out. Our test, you're gonna try and. S- oh, they were g- about to get their season tickets removed after that right, game because they're drunken right. assholes. Yeah, which who even if the uh, something good's happening in the game, your team wins. You don't go on the court at a professional sport. No, I think mean, square up to Ron Artest. This isn't a D3 football game where you storm the field, kid. Yeah. The something they didn't mention is the size of these motherfuckers. Ron Artest. Uh, maybe not when he's younger, but when he's older, 6'9", 250. That dude's going to fuck you up. <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal is jacked. Seven you, foot, like 270. Yeah. What do you think that these guys, like, what do you, do you really think you had a chance? Like, you little all pudgy up. asshole. What a terrible decision. I wish you would have got hit even, by Jermaine. I can't even believe that they got him in the interview. Uh, how funny is that they researched all these guys? Well, he they also made him look like an idiot. No, good. I yeah, I'm glad. It, but he still doesn't think he did anything wrong. That's really what it boils down. No, to. sad. Yeah, in the post game interview, he's like, "Look, I got punched," and he's like, barely has a neck. And you couldn't even see blood. And he leaves in an ambulance with a neck brace on. <laughs> yeah, after on a, were, on a on a backboard. Well, then yeah. the, and then the lady uh, kind of like briefly says like yeah they came in my office and they're talking about trying to sue him yeah and then they cut to him leaving in the ambulance yeah. so like those guys were like trying to get paid for sure yeah for sure yeah it didn't look like anyone got that hurt and then the other worst person is the guy who threw the beer because in the modern day interview he's still a fucking asshole yeah do you feel bad at all that your buddy got punched like no nah. like what you fucking so this guy throws the beer like jim said someone's ron artest is laying on the scoreboard kind of you know, being a clown, someone yeets a beer from what 20, 20 rows back. It was a, like it was that. a yeah. da- it was a dart. Too. It was a good yeah. shot. It was about it was about it was two underhand. sections it was over. Like underhand, two flop. Dude plays a lot of cornhole. Dude, the guy was, two sections guy was over. Two sections over. Probably yeah, row sixteen A. This dude underhand lobs. Uh, looks like it, it's not a plastic cup. It's either aluminum, glass, some kind it's of like bottle, like a like a beer shaped canister of some sort or other. It's glass or aluminum. It could have been, yeah, it could have been a glass. Back then, beer. I feel like the aluminum beer cans were like the shit. Yeah, so my, I, uh, I think that's probably you're what probably it was. right. You yeah, the I mean? little like, silver the bullet era. twisties. So he underhand lobs this thing, and Ron Artest is triggered. Takes off, runs up this thing. Obviously, it's so far away he doesn't know who hit him or threw it. Uh-huh. Passes the main guy who did throw it, and just starts wailing. Which actually, I'm surprised that the rest of the audience um, 
how many people grab our test pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. none of his punches were like full force because everyone's hanging on him. Yeah. Which yeah. like I don't know if I'm doing that to be honest. I'm getting the fuck out of there. I'm I'm watching I think, but I'm like going in an aisle. Like I probably saw this dude throw a beer, and I don't know if I make a quick enough decision like this guy deserves to get punched. But I'm definitely not grabbing a six nine two fifty dude and hanging on his biceps praying. Yeah. Well, also, the accuracy of the row. Like, how did he know where it came from? He must uh, have saw it. Uh, you're right because he's like laying down, like kind of facing the court. Yeah, it's like he knew exactly where to go. No, I mean he's a pro athlete. I that's guess. I don't know. That, yeah, that but you're right. It was impressive. Of, like uh, surroundings. Something they didn't talk a lot about because Reggie Miller was an 18 year vet here is Reggie is like top five notorious shit talkers in the NBA history. Yeah, they didn't brush on that <laughs> at, all. at all. I think uh-huh. I, I might be wrong. It might. Be I heard him. that he's like up there with like the top shit talkers. Yeah, I don't know if it was him or Kevin Garnett. So like again, 50 percent fact still always fits. But one of these dudes like like Dean's like dog or sister passes away and he's telling him on a timeout <laughs> like yo what's up with your sis <laughs> like like just r- actually cold-hearted ruthless yeah. didn't give yeah. a fuck yeah. because they make reggie and now you know he's announced on tnt and all this stuff yeah. and he's super smart with the ucla oh, they like- yeah he's a g and yeah. he is he is he's a smart dude really good player super smart guy uh they made him like the sweet high school sweetheart right and it maybe was by season 18 but i know he, like he he because they talk about culture and him mm-hmm. passing the culture to Jermaine, and that's why Jermaine got knocked for this whole thing. Because like he built the culture of the team, and everyone puts the blame on mm-hmm. him, and he stayed. Everyone else got traded, et cetera. But Reggie definitely set that tone for this team. Maybe that backup point guard that started the whole fucking thing. Learned that from Reggie for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think the other villain of this thing, the way it's presented, Good is point. Stern. Oh, because. Ah. The league, th- his yeah. decision, he was like, it's just me. Yeah, one he didn't zero. talk to anybody else. One yeah. zero. I'm that- the only judge. I'm the judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah. I guess counter that, like, what does he do, though? Like, what do you do? You Wait can't for the investigation to finalize. Maybe. And yeah. Then, and then do the suspension. Just just give him, give him a, hey, you're on break now until we look deeper. For sure. And I don't know, because they didn't talk about that timeline a, a lot, because there was a criminal case, and then there was the S- Stern's yeah. ruling. So, yeah, what do you do? You wait for the criminal case and just go by the court, or do you go by what's professional? Um, I don't disagree. And Stern Stern was actually pretty loved. He kind of made the NBA what it is with money and stuff and, the, and popularity. Yeah, less than two miles in here, there's a street named after him. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's just because the poor kings got to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> he allowed us to stay. I don't know how I feel about Stern, because I don't know what else you do. Because you do have to nip that in the bud. You can't have 250-pound dudes running in your audience. Well, I think... You're going to lose your business. I think we know the truth. I think we know that it was – there was a lot of shit going on in the NBA with, uh, I think, the middle American yeah. fans. Yeah. Not liking the new, younger, yeah. uh, more expressive men on the court. Yeah. And I think they have a problem with that. And like, and those are a lot of the people coming to the arenas. Jim, maybe tickets. look at uh, viewership to see, like NBA viewership from like I don't know, ninety five to two thousand five. See if it did go down. You know, I, it I, could have been a strict twenty uh, percent racist move, eighty percent business move. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it was. You know, I think it was a business decision. Yeah, based in roots of racism. Like, yeah, unintentionally or inten- you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but what? it's like they're trying to make. They're like, oh, if there's never a chance to try and change this around. Yeah. Here it is. You no, know. You, you, I think you're right. I do think you're right. And that's maybe why, as a businessman myself, and I'd like to think I'm not racist, uh, I don't hate Stern for the decision. Because you... He had to do something. Let's say that everyone's fucking... But then they did the uniform change at the same time. Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's true. They did the uniform, like, it dress code change. 100%. They, like, tried to, like... They tried to, you know... Yeah, class it up. Rewind the time of the of the rewind the culture of the sport. It would be interesting. It strange. It would be interesting to look at other sports because WWE. I'm telling you, started to change around the same time. The Attitude Era was gone. Obviously, Stone Cold and some people and retired. NWA Hul- uh, Hulk. Yeah, like all it, 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 start, it started to get really clean. And there was a steroid scandal and suicide stuff in the yeah, WWE. I'm sure, I'm sure they're still clean on not yeah. doing steroids. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> there are like there are like 50 percent of those guys that are floppy as fuck. 50% are still just There's as not jacked, every single yeah. person's just popping at yeah. the seams yeah. with the racer tip nips, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, yeah, I think uh, it was I think it was a national culture thing. Yeah. We started to like clean up all our shit and kind of It's hard to tell. That's from probably this. our the start of our snowflake pussy era. Yeah. It's hard to tell from this. Is 2008 this 2008 and on. Right? 2007. 
what I've got is even Kevin Durant, who's the best in the NBA right now, arguably, uh, at least top five. Uh, tries to be a bad boy, but I'm like, dude, shut up. So first he didn't. He's my our age, and uh, he's covered in tattoos. Put none on his arm. Jersey covers every single tattoo. I didn't even know that. And I wonder if that's influenced by stuff like this as well. He was probably 14 playing in high school. He saw all this stuff going down. He saw the new era. You know what I mean? Like, you just never know little influences that can hit. But then he's like also like supposed to be like the guy that just is not afraid to clap back online. Well, uh, his big story is that <laughs> he's he has, a tough online guy. What you've heard, he has multiple Twitters. That's what he got caught. Yeah, remember I, that? I oh think I think he is. So, is no, I think it shame. just happened again. Not again. Yeah, I think it did. Oh I I don't think he is tough or tries to be tough. I think he's like, I like the guy, but yeah, yeah. I think it's his fake accounts that he didn't sign out of and put it on his I'm real one. I'm a big one. KD fan. Or, you know, <laughs> I, I am. I am. But like. Dude, come on with the twi- the Twitter shit. So bad. Get a manager. Get a social I mean, media dude's, manager. Dude's, the dude's nasty. No, he's insane. Like he's so damn good. But like, what's up with the fake Twitter? Account? Yeah, get a get a social media manager. I don't even want a phone. If I'm that rich, I don't even want a phone. I'm getting a flip phone. What's the point? I'm getting a flip phone to my wife. I mean, they might want it because they like the single guys that want to hit up the girls and stuff on the, there. Like, like you're giving them way too much credit. It's not the single guys. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying, to, just trying to keep it, keep it easy. <laughs> it's definitely not the single guys. Fair, that's fair. That's why I'm Touché. flip. I'm flip phoning it. No Instagram. No Dude, text. Yeah. Just my wife. Yeah. Stay the fuck out, out of trouble. Choosing. It's uh, yeah. We got any view difference? Not really. Well, it's 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 pretty convoluted. Um, the this is average rating per regular season game on broadcast network starting from 1989, and 89 is the highest year shown here. It's a 5.2. And that's a good year. That's the Laker, Bird, Jordan. You know. Yeah. By uh, by two thousand. Yeah. You're down to three point three. What really killed it was, it, I mean, look, started to kill it was the the lockout. Yeah. Season. What year? What year was wow. really low? Ninety three. Oh, two thousand. Two thousand was low, right there with three point Yeah. It went from oh, four four point three to three point three yeah. to three to two point nine to two point six. The year we're talking about two point four. So it, it was a dip. Two three to two. Yeah, so we're two and so he I, was trying to switch it out for sure then something. So they were in a sh- sharp decline. They yeah. were in a sharp Something's decline happening. starting which, in two thousand. Which is lockout union stuff, but also probably this cultural stuff that uh, doesn't sway with guys who love Larry Bird. Well also the two thousands, like say even two th- the year two thousand, like those baggier uh, jerseys and yeah. like that was already creeping in. No, for sure. Like no, four years it. before this even happened. It's Vince Carter. It's yeah. Allen Iverson. No, yeah. th- I mean, and this is that's the sad thing. And maybe obviously again, I'm biased because this is when I was so deep into basketball. But mm-hmm. this is a good era of basketball. No, the Trace and McGrady. Super fun era of basketball. Yeah, there you still sat, had some of the old heads. I mean, this is Kobe's like Vince, Vince Carter, dude. Like yeah. that was a Vince Carter. An athletic, like, athletic Kobe prime. What kid didn't have a Raptors jersey? Or the shocks? Didn't even watch the Raptors. His games. first shocks were my favorite shoe to ever play in my entire life. Oh, well, it was a big deal here two years before that here in Sacramento. No, and that's the only era Sacramento was any good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For us, it was like a good time to be. A yeah, fan. it was the, a Lakers. The only time. Lakers were good. Houston's still good. And then even slightly after that, Steve Nash and the Suns, all these other markets, like it was a good time for basketball. But it was even Jason Kidd. That's probably like when I was like also a kid like our age. Like I never played like competitive basketball because like my dad just didn't want me playing basketball because yeah. he wanted me to focus on like baseball and that was pretty much it like yeah when it wasn't just what you're better at yeah. well i mean but i like i played basketball every day yeah basketball you know, like, i think is one of the few that every kid kind of fucks around with dude, like, like at there, least was at four, there was there was four basketball hoops on my court right every every school flight. you drive around sacramento same thing there's like yeah. six outdoor courts or we go and every kid's the, fucking around or we yeah. go down the elementary school because the gate was always open for the uh for the back where the playground stuff was like you can go play full court there. Yeah. Like, it was like every day was basketball day. My buddy had a sports court. You know, yeah, one of my yeah, rich friends yeah. had the sports That's court. Sick. Like, we're out there lowering it down to like, yeah, you know, six feet, dunking, <laughs> like, the, with the lights on at night, feeling like we're like Reggie Miller. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there was a lot of cultural stuff that happened in that era. Uh, I think it was a little bit later, but it was the Kobe Bryant, like, rape allegations. Yeah. What year was that? I was sitting here uh, thinking about that. Imagine if that would have happened, like, 2000. Uh, 19 uh yeah 2020 i think it's 2000 you know six ish it's 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 early uh jason kidd which is a similar era um had a um uh, physical abuse i think whether it was a wife or girlfriend at the time he's in like a rap video with the land rover i don't like range rovers at all jason kidd was my favorite player all of a sudden i like range rovers mm-hmm. you know what i mean like th- like all this kind of stuff really was there mm, they're kobe bryant 
rape case yeah. 2003 see it's that era look, look up, at that look, look up that. a that's jason kid huge decline with yeah. That. yeah yeah and kobe was the god right there he, he he sat the bench for one year and then just started shitting on people for the next five years and now we're in 2003 he's the god of the nba look up a uh, jason kid ass- assault maybe assault a year nothing ever really happened with that case right jason or uh no, no, the kobe? kobe no i think it, i think it probably, it probably settled, settled a little out. bit yeah yeah, yeah. And it was just like it ended up being just like some chick that would like hit him up. Yeah, and then I think at a hotel, and they were just. And then the post game story, like who knows, right? Because it's all like semi propaganda in a way. PR uh, turned into more of like a Kobe became a family man and started loving his wife after that. Two thousand one. See, same era, and they won the championship uh, in New Jersey. uh, I think around that uh, around that era as well. uh, Just afterwards, two thousand five, I think. So the Pistons won the championship in 2003-2004 season, right? They, and they beat then the Lakers. Yeah, uh, they won one year, and then I think the Lakers won this year. That were the, where Reggie and them lost, and then uh, Lakers had that's the Lakers' little run, and they had a run before because I think they did two off two, and then uh, New Jersey had a little run there. And then I don't know, and then Spurs. we st- and then we started to get into Spurs. The Spurs, Spurs, Spurs had run. a fat run late late. 205s and then and then we started to creep into the uh, LeBron era with yeah. Miami and Cleveland yeah. and yeah. God that was like it's crazy like that last big dominant group was like that Spurs group yeah it was Before Lakers the Lakers LeBron Spurs. Yeah, era sure. there hasn't been uh, someone that's just I mean there's been good teams like the Warriors had the mm-hmm. chance but they can't stay healthy and yeah there's not been like the dynasty dynasties so I got one more villain in this whole thing and that's the entire fucking pundit class that's on. TV, cable news, radio, Stephen A, ESPN, <laughs> Stephen A, fucking <laughs> Stephen A, Will Bond. No one likes Stephen A. Did they not like him then too? Nobody ever. Because I didn't Stephen have A. ESPN at the time, no, but I know I, no one likes him now. I watched the shit well, out of ESPN back in the day. Yeah, that's that's when anymore. I saw the the fight. I saw the fight on ESPN. I yeah. wasn't watching the game. I remember seeing it though, like at my buddy Aaron's house, like on ESPN, because his brother was older than us. Yeah. So he was like always watching ESPN. He was like at, b- at that time, I think he might have been like 2004. He was probably already had just graduated high school, or he was might have been in college, might have been home for college. I can't remember. Yeah, but pure jock. He mode. was old. Yeah, yeah, he was a jock, you know, <laughs> yeah. basketball player. But anyway, he was watching ESPN. And then we came in and we saw. He's like, "Oh, you guys, gotta check this out." And we're like, yeah. "Oh my god, that's what we like." He dude. So he has used to see me like the culture of like the stuff. Instagram now, you can take a picture of your shoes, whatever. There's all kinds of shoe culture pictures on Instagram, yeah. right? Tell me why this fool. This is what everybody did, and when like the older guys, he had legit printed photos of his own kicks, of his own kicks in his room on his wall. That's sick. I've never <laughs> seen that. Apparently, that was a thing for a while. No, I'm sure it was. It I was, think it was like in the early 2000s, like dude, like the Jordan 11s. Yeah, he had a picture of him with I a like with a print, and like and then the picture is like tacked on the wall like he had a whole wall of all the shoes and like, like it was that. like what the kids like in high school in the early 2000s like the you know like uh 2001 2002 like seniors like that's the kind of shit they yeah. were doing see i didn't have like the culture that i got into basketball and hip-hop was like all on my own it was all just watching music videos and shit like my my teammates who are good basketball players like they listen to country and edm and they kind of played soccer they kind of played baseball like all my friends like jim's met a lot of my friends like now I'm a little bit older. I dress a little hip hoppy, but not that crazy. Like, but I'm nothing like any of my friends. <laughs> like this, I was. I felt like on an island. I went to art school. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I just learned these things by playing like AAU stuff or tournaments or mm. just watching it. It's not like I had older brothers yeah. or people that were also into it. And I'm like, yeah, well, I got like, into shoes because of my buddy, yeah, Aaron's older brother Phil. Yeah, like he. That's how I got. I didn't into have that. that shit. I just watched the fuck out of basketball, and so I got into shoes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to the pundit class for a second. Yeah, there. Uh, they all said incredibly irresponsible things. Yeah, Every, to to a a person. Yeah, they said irresponsible things without really understanding what happened, without really understanding who was involved, about how it was instigated, and they backed up the punishments that Stern laid out like it was going to be you know well, it was like tie him to the whipping post in yeah. some ways you know there's a couple aha moments uh in a couple movies here and it, it's like things i understand and digest but then like someone says it in a way like last time with the sexual assault um i talked about how the guy said like these kids have never had anything 
passion or intimate with opposite sex and now their first thing's ruined forever right like right like i've always known like rape will fuck someone up forever like clearly like i can't relate but like that's such an extreme um taking over of someone's soul Mm-hmm. And when you do it to a 14 year old who's maybe never kissed a boy, mm-hmm. now you fucking really snatched negativity for the next 70 years. Mentioned here, I think it might have been Steven Jackson. I don't know who said it, but they're um, basically said like, yeah, and no, weird in hockey. They love this shit. That's a really good point. They're yeah. like, and, and but who that's plays hockey. White people play hockey. When and how common that same conversation would happen today. Even though we're more woke in 2021, that same conversation I've probably heard in passing somewhere where yeah. someone's like, "Dude, hockey's so cool. They fight for fun." And then one bad thing happens in that NBA or NFL. NFL it happened. Uh, uh, the Cleveland Browns uh, defensive end grabbed uh, uh, the quarterback, ripped his helmet off, and hit him with it. Yeah, and people are freaking out like this guy's a fucking rabid murderer. Yeah, you know. And I'm like. Yeah, it was irresponsible, yeah. No, yeah, but that's literally what happens every other game in hockey. Yeah. You rip the dude's helmet off, you try to get a punch off, and the referees take it away. Yeah. A dude in the NFL who's black did it once, and this dude, people acted like he was a fucking monster. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, huh? Yeah. My weird moment of turn in watching the, the whole thing, too, th- that was clearly yours. Mine was when the when the prosecutor came up, his, the, guy, the guy's name was John Green, the music under his intro... Devalued him really hard. It, oh, on it, purpose, you think? Yeah, because yeah. it made you think, oh, this guy's a fucking goofball. Yeah, yeah. He's he's gonna go hard on these guys. Like, and and people. I mean, it's long enough ago that people don't remember. I don't remember shit that happened two weeks ago. Often right. in in that kind of detail, so I don't really know exactly where he's gonna go. And he turns out to be very much on the side of the players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they start off like, oh, okay, we're going to discount this guy. It, it was like, bit of music, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah and it was. Th- and then there was You're that right. sharp turn That's funny. where he was he was like, no, actually, who was responsible was the fans. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. And I get it. It's a fine balance pure business-wise. But it can't be 100 to 0. That no. this the, and they made it so clearly hundred percent. Yeah, they zero. suspended our test for the rest of the season. Yeah, it could be like a little fifty five, forty five. I could maybe That's see. A, you could maybe try to say like, hey, like you are making millions. It's your responsibility to hold these rules. That's why you're fifty five in the wrong, and these guys are forty five in the wrong. Like, there's something, but this is clear. Like, no, you fucked. O'Neill up. got his whole thing revoked, right? Yeah, he's just fucked. Oh, uh, I think in the actual court, he's the only one that pushed it. Yeah, you guys. But if his, what about his suspensions from the NBA? I don't think that I don't stay. I don't remember. His was the least for sure, right? Yeah. Um, it was twenty five games. Yeah, which is which is wild. Which is huge. Yeah, That's over huge. a quarter of the season. But they don't get any of that money too. No, I'm no. sure not. Suspensions like no, you, your contract no, don't get paid for those things. I don't know at the time, but I'm pretty sure now, like you're fucked fuck. Like you can't you can't step in the arena, you can't get practice with them. Like there's a bunch of weird rules. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, because then you come in out of shape. Your coach obviously hates you. Like, the whole team hates you. Uh, yeah, it, it was a nuclear option, really, what it came down yeah. to. It sounds like, like O'Neal just literally, like, that one game defined his rest of his career. It kind of did. I think he became an all-star after that. He might have been an all-star at the time, and he played well. But the team obviously fell apart. Uh, one he just became the new Reggie Miller as far as, like, yeah. just not accomplishing anything yeah. on this team that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, the team was very mediocre afterwards. He, he had some success personally, but the team broke up because of the two things. Um, one... Uh, they they mentioned Larry Bird. He's mm-hmm. the GM at the time, and he was. They a coach showed him like in the stands bit. once. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't they dig in on that a little? That's bit? a real good question. Um, maybe he didn't want to interview or something. Who knows the the rules? But you would think they would dig in there a little bit. Um, and then two, an interview that I didn't see, and I guess I knew the buildup, but I didn't. I didn't know the Jermaine Artest hated each other so much, or didn't hate each other, but like we're almost too similar, or like you know fr- the friction. Um, the Artest Lakers championship interview mm. where he basically says like, yeah, I fucked up. I feel really bad. Yeah. yeah. And it seems so genuine and he's so articulate with it. Um, it's such a good interview. That's looks like it's live after a championship game. Yeah. Which is so hard. Like that's kind of a controversial thing in general in sports, like interviewing people like w- when they fresh come when off they the field, fresh lose, whatever, fresh yeah. win or whatever. Like I get that it's entertainment, but like how, what's their fucking head space, right, you know, and right. now they're supposed to sound professional and he crushed that interview and it felt so genuine. Oh, well, he just went. You. That was the last thing you expected to come out of his mouth. For sure. That's like. The, it seems like. And who knows that it's edited. But it seems like he sits down and just starts talking about that. He didn't say like, "Thanks, Kobe. Thanks, Phil Jackson." He like goes into like, "This feels great," and <laughs> and I feel bad because yeah. I did this thing. And 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 I don't know. Some people they try to like change the subject. 
yeah, yeah. Kinda, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and well, what about anyway, Kobe? So. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. He he disappeared. Jermaine O'Neal disappeared. Um, Stephen Jackson has been very popular. He's done some stuff on TNT, and then he has a really big podcast. If you guys want to go listen to a, a good podcast, he has a podcast with Matt. Stephen Barnes. Jackson, I like. I've always liked no, he's Stephen good. Jackson. He's good. His he's, podcast he's, with it's like a up and smoke or something. I think they just like get high all the time. But <laughs> it's like him and uh, uh, Matt Barnes, who's day. a local guy, a uh, local guy, and they do a Kobe interview. Um, within the year, I think that Kobe passed. It's yeah. a sick interview. They go to Kobe's house, uh, and they obviously all know each other really well. Matt Barnes played with Kobe and stuff. It's really, really good interview. Um, and generally a pretty damn good podcast. So like, I feel like they stayed quote unquote relevant. Not that that's everyone's goal mm-hmm. when they retire basketball, but like Stephen Jackson's like history is almost deleted. Like he's not known as the shit guy right now. But when he was in the league, he was kind of known as a shithead. So my question, my this is sort of my final question of the whole thing is about team chemistry. Yeah. And they're assuming that they're going to win everything. But from the view of the documentary from the 17 years, you know, post, you can definitely tell that there are cracks in in that chemistry. There and the yeah. question is like what role does chemistry play? In winning NBA championships, I can tell you yeah. from from what I've seen that it's a big deal in in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think because uh, of the long season. If you don't if you don't get along, and you don't have good chemistry, and you don't look out for each other, a hundred and you know yeah. sixty games plus, which is more like two hundred days. Yeah, because you're together it's like all the most time. of a year. It's a year round sport. But that's yeah. that's the really ends. that's the thing I can't really relate to because I guess in high school the seasons are short. If, if we went pretty deep in the playoffs and you play twenty five thirty games, which is a lot for a high school kid, but that's only if you go far. If you don't, you play fifteen games. Yeah. Um, and obviously I was lucky that all my best friends were on my team, and I was also lucky that my mentor and my my head coach was like all about that. Uh, I learned from John Wooden, like that's like his is not his mentor, but like his greatest aspiration. That's mm. all Wooden's about. I think at the pro level, I think there's there's two takes. One, I think obviously the perfect chemistry is on the court, off the court, right? If you're homies and you want to kick it off the court and you guys have a good time eating dinner and you mesh on the court with how your play styles and your your passion, whatever, of course you're gonna win. Like that's easy. But I think at the pro level, because these guys are starting to be adult adults, that if you can have chemistry on the court, it is enough. Mm. You don't have to love each other off the court. And so I think that Indiana team could have done that, honestly. Mm. Um, it was just the, the the perfect storm of the beer, perfect fucking cornhole toss. And then also... The, the perfect toss. It really was. <laughs> it really... You guys should just Google that. Who's also listening. like the, the wrist action. No. So it's like <laughs> this guy's been just practicing for this What's moment. the trend where it lands? You know, you flip it and it uh, lands? Yeah, flip yeah. He yeah. flipped it and landed on Ron Artis' belly button, it looked like. <laughs> like it was fucking godlike. <laughs> He's the original yeah. Yeah, bottle flip <laughs> yeah. guy. I think, I think this He's team... He's got prob- a YouTube channel now and on yeah. Instagram. He does tricks. Anyway. I think this team Merch. probably could have done it. Um, the hotheads and the technicals, that's like a whole nother conversation. If mm. like those guys could even control their personal emotion but mm-hmm. i don't think the chemistry was that big of a deal um i think last dance i guess i keep, keep referencing because it it's about jordan but it does a really good job of digging into the team mm-hmm. it talks about rodman a lot i don't think like those guys are like it's kind of like a family thing if the chemistry is there you're like a family but like you don't always like like your brother you love your brother you just mm-hmm. accept your you know your shithead cousin for who he is you don't want to hang out oh, with him 24 that's just pete yeah you know, yeah not. like if pete's going in a fight i'm gonna punch the guy who pete's fighting but i don't want to like have dinner with pete tonight no uh and i feel like the the a lot of teams are like that even even my high school team and my high school team is like the the magic like there's magic at my school i i knew these kids for 13 years we have every single period together like it's not like other school like it's fucking weird Mm -hmm. when you think about it like i know these kids you know know these people more than you know some of your family most of your family no uh, more than anybody yeah Yeah. way more than anybody and still obviously i didn't love them all or i mean i loved them all i didn't like them all i didn't want to go hang out with this kid but like he's whatever my power forward and we're gonna rock and roll and and so like i think the nba and pro sports kind of can turn into that i think the more of these kind of things come out the more you see like these these teams look like they were like unstoppable forces uh, all united together then these more of these documentaries come out, you start to realize, oh well, there's actually was a lot of problems. They just kind of yeah. put it to the side before they came out and just got the job done. Or how many like they don't talk about a lot, but like how many meetings are going on? Like, hey, Dean and Jim, I noticed you guys like uh, really f- you know fucking up in practice. Like, let's sit down and talk this through. Like, y- you fuck his wife or like what's going on? You know, like shit like that. I'm sure yeah. happens. Yeah, for probably. Sure. Yeah. But it's again bad PR. So the NBA doesn't want to show it, and the right. team doesn't want to show it. But like those meetings yeah. have to happen. Yeah. 
or the the one on one boys getting a text like, "Hey man, you fucking stole my sneakers. What's up?" You know, like so, so shit happens for sure. Again, you're together so much. Yeah. Dean, you have any um, any moments in the whole thing that really struck you hard? Uh, you know, I think what I kind of liked the most, I guess, was Ron Artest's like uh, honesty. Yeah. He's I know he's good, always kind of been like that kind of guy, but like just seeing that side of him of like just being a man and admitting. That yeah. he kind of chose the coward move and the easy escape to get his championship, and how he kind of had regret for that. Kind of like, ah, man, that was kind of uh, that was big of him to say. It's very easy to just kind of brush that over. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I never liked him as a player. Uh, I never really cared enough about him. Yeah. Like, I always thought, like, oh, that's Ron Art. You know, yeah. you always hear about he him. It was Kobe's third guy. All yeah. right, cool. But what w- watching the stuff playing, makes me like him a lot. Yeah, his. You know, I guess I never really paid enough attention to his defense, where it, like stood yeah. out to me. Yeah, he was be a honest. beast. Yeah, like little stuff like that. They talk about him and Steven Jackson fighting over who they're who who gets to guard the best player. Yeah, like that's so normal. And they literally could have gone to fist to cuffs over it. Like that shit's normal to me. Mm-hmm. Like I've definitely yelled. We had another very passionate player on my team, the great above me. Like I fucking screamed at him over shit like that all the time, all the time. He probably hated me. All right, we've been talking about uh, Mel's Palace. You can check it out on Netflix. Yeah. Netflix will sponsor us one day yeah, with a fucking someday. code or we're something. We're their someday. best business. <laughs> this yeah. is this is the most on trend we've been, I think, in the, in our movie series. Um, yeah, it was good. That was fun. Where can people find you, Dean? Uh, yeah, find me at uh, you know at deansadorf.ck uh, on IG or uh, at Caffeine Kilos if you're into coffee and weightlifting stuff. Whatever. Get caffeinated, folks. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, new show every single Wednesday. Appreciate you. Three uh, sb.co. I'm Simon Mike. Everywhere you want to find me. I am at DJ McD and all the social media. This show is 50% facts, where percent is a word, and 50 is just numbers. And you've been sitting us, sitting with us here, and it's a pretty good company. We'll talk to you next week.